Glenn Keels. Is this Glenn? Hi. Hi, Glenn. Come on in. Glenn Keels, the director of marketing for the hyperscale business. All right, we got some props. Got pro if we need them. If we need them. Oh, we, we <laughs> absolutely need them. Mark, we can get these in, right? Yeah. yeah, okay. Glenn's been on the queue before, so uh, you look good today. Well, you thank you very much. You do too. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. So, okay, so we got the, all the show horses came on, you know, give them the pitch. What's the real deal? Tell us what's going on. Uh, okay, you know, so. Paul's super excited, so uh, obviously. Well, we're all really excited. So, key, three key takeaways. Number one, uh, we're starting. Um, this multi-phase, multi-year project, we see enormous potential in this new category of server processors, okay, whether it's ARM, whether it's Atom and others. But it's going to take, I hate to say it's going to take a village uh, to actually unlock that promise. It's going to take infrastructure, innovative technologies, and an innovative new architecture. It's going to take customer enablement and getting unfettered access to these customers so they can get the technology in their hands, mm -hmm. so they can talk to the experts at HP, so they can talk to our partner experts, and lastly, it's going to take, just like we've done before with Blades and x86 servers, beginning to unite the industry, software vendors, silicon vendors, system vendors, large and small, so that these large customers where IT is their business, they can count on a stable ecosystem. Okay? They run their business off of this infrastructure, um, and I hate to say it, they don't want to buy a Betamax. They need industry leaders partnering hand-in-hand -hand with uh, some of the smaller guys building up that ecosystem. Let's talk about that Betamax thing, because that people, you know, Betamax <laughs> species, you want, you want the standards. But, you know, this is, you know, for the folks in the industry who are kind of, you know, minding their business and not really in the inside baseball or work at HP is super excited about the new innovations here. Mm -hmm. This is, may seem left coming out of left field for them. So just break down what the pain points are about the hyperscale market. Right. Why is this so such a big deal? I mean, we're trying to ask everybody, right. why is this such a big deal? So uh, the pain point, let's cover that first. Why is it a big, excuse me, what are the pain points? And then the, why, why is it a why big the deal? Big deal? Yeah. Uh, first, the, the pain points around these hyperscale customers, the web 2.0 customers, the social media customers, the mass market hosters. Uh, some even enterprises are doing um, massive scale out uh, uh, analytics. Mm -hmm. Um, they're deploying servers at an unprecedented scale, okay? Servers that um, uh, are typically built around the CPU complex, okay, that are standalone in nature. Um, it's eating up power. It's eating up space. That's not only got, not good for business, uh, it's not good for the environment, okay? As we look out to 2015, this growth of this, you and I are on cell phones every day. You and I, I'm, I'm being taught how to use Facebook and Twitter by my children, Okay. Uh, we're downloading videos, we're collaborating, we're connecting with old colleagues. The demand for this connected society is growing exponentially. On the supply side, you have these unsung heroes that are powering that connected society that are out of power, out of space, um, and they run their business on this. That's the real pain point. How is this revolutionary? Um, just like other major industry inflection points, whether it's x86 servers challenging the traditional CISC and RISC architectures in the 90s, uh, whether it's turning the century into blades and virtualization, creating change-ready architectures. Um, if we look out to 2015, the power that's going to be consumed, the space that's going to be consumed by these web giants, um, it's pretty huge, all right? We need to continue to work on incremental steps. Oh, okay, let's talk about that. Web, web 2.0 is kind mm -hmm. of an older term, kind of like, you know, it's, even though they still have a, con a conference around it. But, I mean, it's not just web firms. You're talking about financial institutions. That's There's not a, that's FSI, large scale out. Government. Large scale out. The people so, that deploy in the tens of thousands of servers. But it's just servers. not just web, though. I mean, web So is, is, it, is it the not, lunatic fringe, or is it going mainstream I, over the next five or ten years? I would not call this the lunatic right, fringe. So these, are, these are customers that deploy servers in the tens of thousands at a time. I mean, we're seeing okay. cloud computing, for example, in government. Mm -hmm. Right. Government, financial, healthcare, mm -hmm. changing their architectures over to be much more right. connected right. with mobility. So mm -hmm. that's driving a huge change. So, so I wouldn't, web is kind of a weird term because people think like, oh, Facebook stumble upon, you know, Twitter. Um, well, let me, let me, let me uh, clarify that just a bit. So the architecture and the quants that we're talking about uh, for this new extreme lower en energy server category where we see the applicability. It's all about the application. Where we see the applicability is these more lightweight CPU-oriented applications, web serving, um, web middle-tier uh, uh, applications like Memcached, Hadoop. Web um, environments, not web companies. Yes, so exactly. That would okay. parse that a little bit Large web environments, okay? Which financial companies and the people love there's the a lot use? of There's a lot <laughs> of large web environments. Everyone has to okay. use it. And analytic, and analytic intensive, yep. uh, offline uh, analytics, et cetera. Often data intensive. Um, right. But now I want to get back to, sorry, you asked a question. I'm gonna, <laughs> um, why is this big? 
Um, looking back to um, industry inflection points in the past, we can continue to just do the same, and we're going to we're going to continue to do that. We've got the most energy efficient two socket mainstream server on the market. You can go to HP HP.com and go get it right now. If you want a near perfect data center, you can go get an HP Ecopod right now. Just go to HP.com. We're going to continue to in- innovate on our traditional infrastructure, getting the most energy efficient performance per watt per dollar. But we need to think differently. We've got to think out of the box. We've got to think in quantum leaps if we're going to enable these customers who are going to have you know, half the world connected via mobile phones. So you have some um, demos for us, Mark. We yeah. have some, um, <laughs> shots here. I can't. Yeah, what do we got here? What are, what are the uh, toys you brought here? So, so let's, get, let's see if we can get a little so hopefully, Vanna White here going on here. <laughs> so here we go. So hopefully you've seen um, in the SL6500, this is uh, a quad-node compute cartridge, okay, that's part of the Redstone right platform. Right that's good. That's okay. part of the Redstone server develop, development platform, okay, that packs the, – the system itself packs 288 servers into a single 4U chassis, more than 2,800 in a single well, rack. Slow down, okay? slow down, slow down. Replay, play okay, so these are the servers. These, these this, here, this, this is the equivalent of four servers, okay, all with its memory, all with an integrated fabric, and the first instantiation uh, is based on CalZeta Energy Core. Uh, and we've got a rich roadmap to follow with Damn. both development platforms and production platforms. And how much power is each server drawing? To About five watts at full okay. utilization, between okay. five and six, okay? okay. At okay. idle, next to nothing. Damn. Okay. That's damn good. <laughs> it's almost like I don't have the quants to back it's this up, but you can think about oh, this know. is the Sam, Library of Congress in your pocket. Hold it? Okay. Oh, well, yeah, we have a big data project. We have one server. We need five more. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Again, by so doing two. this and combining it with a rich infrastructure that's shared and federated, that we can that reduce 2,800 uh, yes. in a rack. Okay. 2,800 rack, but some customers, so this is for more of a web workload where it's yeah. more CPU intensive. The Redstone architecture, the Redstone platform, you can also mix and match compute with, so uh, these, these are actually in, spinning media. Okay. So these slide into a tray. Just pop right in. Pop right in. Pop tray, right in. Right, Eight, the chassis. A- 18 of these fit yeah. into a tray, okay. four trays in a chassis with four servers on each compute cartridge and you can mix and match we spinning also have disk w- spinning or, disk or, or ssd flash. Yeah. okay um a storage cartridge because some customers uh, want to really flesh out these type of new low energy servers for like hadoop mm-hmm. where you want to put a, a spindle per core let's say okay so the redstone architecture allows customers to mix and match storage and compute in a very flexible way to do their t- their application testing and tune. benchmarking they can tune everything. absolutely absolutely nice that's awesome. All right. Woo, that's good. And, and so like uh, you, you're asking about tuning. So you, you, that's part of this announcement, right? Is, 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 is tools to be able to do that tuning? Or is right. that some so of the secret sauce that you guys are bringing to the um, table? I'd, I'd say we're bringing some secret sauce. A lot of the research and the tools that HP Labs will be bringing into our new Discovery Lab. Mm-hmm. But equally important, if not more so, is us uniting um, that ecosystem of partners, whether it's um, the partners that we're announcing today in our Pathfinder program uh, will be sending out additional invitations effective now um, uh, to help uh, build those tools, to develop the best practices, to develop standards, um, whether it's silicon partners, software partners, or system partners. We did this with Blades, okay? When Blades was a glimmer in our mind uh, that we could, you know, create a change-ready virtualized infrastructure, guess what? It wasn't just about a technology and introducing Blades. It was about creating the solution builder program back then. We started out with 10. Last time I checked, we had 300, okay? That took blades from a glimmer in our eye that could create incredible customer value to what is now a mainstay in most enterprise data centers. So those partners are where those tools are going to mostly come from. Excellent. All right, Glenn. Glenn Keels, uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on the Cube and uh, Cube alumni. bringing some, All right. some props. All right. Can you uh, leave those luck. four servers with us, please, in the <laughs> chassis? Thank you very much. You guys take care. Have a